Alan here at the Urban Arcade and this is my Doom random stories for the PlayStation 4. Not the original Doom because it can be quite confusing. Almost like Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 9 you know. These reboots they just name them with the original names. But that's fine. Now I'm not really that adventurous when it comes to most games. Certain franchises. I never really got into first person shooters later on. I mean I played them as a kid but as I got older I just couldn't get into games that pretty much seemed the same. I didn't really like Call of Duty or Battlefield. But that's not to say I didn't pick up a few of them to see what all the fuss was about. That and most of my friends still play them. So I thought I'd give it a go. I'm adventurous to a degree. Pretty much the only games I've played in recent years that were first person shooter games was probably Halo, 1 to 3 and Alien vs Predator. The more modern games and I got into them because they were on a different planet. Shooting aliens on different planets seemed a lot more entertaining than shooting other people on games that were based in real life. That's just me though I guess. And I was sitting around one time and someone linked me the video for the trailer. It was like a first reveal of Doom. And I was like, why did they send me this? But I think they guessed that I'm into retro games and I probably like Doom, which is true. And instantly it took me back to them sci-fi movies. The Aliens, The Predator and Terminator franchises, which I was always into as a kid. Again, you could use your imagination with that kind of stuff. And I always liked doing Quasar. It's like the opposite of paintballing and BB shooting, like airsoft skirmish. It's less painful, but the theme in them places are like the alien spaceships. The places that you saw on the films, and I liked it. Most of them places had arcades within them, and as you know, <laughs> I'm into games. And I really like light gun games, I always have done. If I ever see one, I'll pick up that gun and have a go. It doesn't really matter what type of game it is too, as long as there's guns involved, I'll pick up that light gun, throw a few coins in the machine, and give it a blast. And I always have such a fun time. I've always tried to replicate that experience picking up light guns throughout the past, but it's never really felt the same. First person shooters again puts you behind the gun. So it's you playing, and I guess light guns always felt like that. You were the one firing the gun and you held a physical gun in your hands. Some of them vibrated and the slides went back, and that was nice. Most arcades you visit now will have a light gun game, whether it be House of the Dead, Time Crisis, or a Terminator game. Some of them, yeah, they're not bad. They're just coin guzzers really, let's face it. Anyway, Doom, the original Doom from 93 on the PC. Now I only ever got to see people playing it when I was a kid, I never got to play it. It was a game heavily made for adults. Back then this was worse than Mortal Kombat. People were saying you were killing people with guns and that was more apparent and more, more serious than ripping someone's head off with enough in a fight, something you could do. But that's what made you want to play it more. A game you weren't allowed to play. We wanted to go in most arcades but because they involved gambling if they had slot machines you couldn't. It felt adult, it felt forbidden so you wanted to play it. And word got around quick, especially in school, everyone spoke of Doom. All I can remember back then was how quick it was, the sound effects, the loud music and I just always saw it as people that were very smart were the only people that got to play this because they were playing it on a PC. That's sort of how I thought back then. Now I'm aware it was released on the SNES, but I never knew anyone that had it. So I never got to play it, I just got to see it and read about it. That was until it was released for the Sony Playstation. Sure enough, I had to pick it up, obviously. And to think that this was the best home port available, that's what was said anyway. I didn't know whether it was true or not, only till recently I can see that it was a very good port, very much respected, and I loved it. I finally had this very gory, very 18, very adult game that you're not meant to be playing. And I just saw it as the PC version. I thought it was exactly the same. Because I couldn't see them side by side. Years later I've realised there's things on the PlayStation version I prefer. As opposed to the PC version. Lighting for instance. I liked how fast the PC version was though. And I still do prefer the music on the PC version. I never owned a PC as a kid. And I didn't really know that many people that did. And even if they did they wouldn't have something that could handle this game because it was quite an advancement back in the day and it was nice knowing that I could now play that game on a console and I found the game to be quite scary the sound effects, the loud noises turning round to find an imp demon behind you slashing at you it instantly made me want more I wanted more first person shooters and I kinda thought imagine they had an Aliens game like this well they did make a game like that Alien Trilogy which still creeps me out to this very day 
back then, if you went to someone and said, I've got pink acid boots on, even now, they'll know what that is. It's like A, B, A, C, A, B, B for Mortal Kombat. They'll know straight away, oh yeah, you played Alien Trilogy, you used the cheat codes, and it was a terrifying game. You would all start to talk about it. Now, this was putting the sci-fi movies I loved and first-person shooting into the same thing. How brilliant is that? I remember me and my friend used to play this. We played it without the cheats. We didn't get that very far. We never completed it. Obviously, we did complete it with the cheats because you had unlimited ammo and health. And that was always sort of made you feel safe. But if you wanted to play this and have the real experience, you had none of that. Stepping over a corpse, which injure you, obviously the blood is made out of acid. And one of the worst things that still makes me cringe now is a face hugger crawling over the screen. You'll never get that image out of your head. And it just terrified you. You just saw it climbing up and it was on your face and you just wanted to sort of look away. It was like a spider being on your face almost. These games always had awesome music, awesome atmospheres. They made me feel like I was on an adventure, like I was a badass. And then Duke Nukem came along. This was sort of like the comic relief of all them games. It was funny. It was one of them games again that was made for adults but for all the wrong reasons. And kids wanted this game for them reasons. A game I had on the PlayStation, hard as nails, like they all were. Most of these first person shooters were really difficult. And that was it. I was finally into them. I liked them. As long as they were more set in space and not like war games. Then, recently, I decided to pick up Doom for the PlayStation 4. I'd heard so much about it but didn't pick it up till quite late. I guess I don't like playing what everyone else is into, or at that current time, because you're just going to hear all about it. And I absolutely love the way the game starts off. You're chained down to a concrete slab, which looks like a tomb. Straight away you're attacked by one of the possessed. He's trying to snap at you with his teeth. Being the beast that you are, you break out of them chains like they're nothing, and pick up the plasma pistol to fire at the rest of them. Straight away there's been no explanation to what's going on. I don't even think I'm wearing any boxer shorts. While I'm making a video, not the game, you know? Yeah, literally, why would you be? You're chained down, you can see your feet, and then you find your Praetor suit. I always love seeing suits like this in games, like Halo's armour. And I remember Duke Nukem saying, power armour is for pussies. That's not true. These are essential, and I like them. It gives you that feel. That you're in space feel, you need to wear a big bulky costume that's bulletproof. Yeah, you need it. Straight away I started to wonder, what is the story? You know, nothing's being said to me yet. And that's because this game jumps straight into it. Literally, as you're getting a slight briefing, he throws the computer screen out of the way. And I, for one, really appreciate that. I appreciate there's no long-winded tutorials at the beginning. I just want to get on with it. It's a shooter. I just want to destroy enemies. And straight away, that's what you do. It throws you straight into it. And I got that feeling of being alone in Mars. No one can hear you scream out here. I love the gun mechanics, shooting down the hip, no sights, just blast away anything that's in your way. Ah, oh, it's good to be back into first person shooting that I like. Crazy first person shooting, it's out of control, there's a lot going on, I love the lighting and their eye for detail. They really made me feel like I'm here. You know like on most films that are set in space, like the Alien films? You have like a little briefing at the beginning and they're talking about what their mission is and you can see the area. The sets that make them look like they're on a real spaceship. I love that. All of that has gone into this, and you can see it. They know what they're doing. Just look at everything. The scenery, the walls, the screens mounted everywhere, to the holograms. It just makes you think that a lot of very important things are going on in this place. And there's even vending machines. I love that. Getting a pizza out of a vending machine. That would be brilliant. Yeah, I welcome that. Here's to the future. And with games such as this, I like the exploration. I like to go around looking at all the details. Things that many of us take for granted. You know, it was never like this when I was a kid. It was never this detailed. It's like you're walking around in a movie and seeing the fate of the poor people that didn't make it. Just shows you how dangerous this mission is for your faceless, nameless doom guy. If you'll play the game, you'll understand the story. Something I'm not going to express you what it is because all I want to talk about is how much I enjoyed it. Walking around shooting at demons, seeing what could happen next. Some of them are different, some of them are faster, some of them are stronger, some of them have shields or better guns. And depending on the settings you put this game on, it's really difficult to survive. You're always constantly running out of ammo. These Hell Knights for instance, they'll charge at you, ground pound you, and they are really difficult to put down. 
And it wouldn't be a first person shooter or a Doom game without an awesome set of weapons. My favourite weapon on this game would have to be the heavy assault rifle. With the exception of the shotgun, because you're going to notice a lot of combat on this game is close quarters, and you're going to need it. Throughout the game you'll have an option to upgrade most of your guns, and that's one of the best parts of it. You can turn a shotgun that fires normal shotgun rounds to fire an explosive rounds, and guns that have scopes on them, and homing missiles, that being one of my favourites. Because like all the games, as they progress, the enemies get harder, and you're going to need stronger weaponry. And you'll find that you have that later on in the game, and it was nice. I started to feel safe and I started going back through the game with this heavy arsenal now that I have it. Walking around causing complete carnage with a chain gun, isn't that the best? It's almost like completing a Resident Evil game and going back through it with an unlimited rocket launcher. Because you're probably wondering, why are you using cheats and how do you have unlimited ammo? Well, it's these runes that you unlock and you can upgrade that give you perks throughout the game. Much needed ones too, you'll be using them a lot later on. You'll find them scattered throughout the game, which you either complete there and then, or you do them at the main menu. Completing them like you'll have one health point, and you'll have to take down a certain number of enemies. Not to mention you're timed and get a few seconds extra each kill you get. And the one I'm using is Rich Get Richer. Having 100 armor or more will give you unlimited ammo, so it's nice to go back through the game with it, and blast everything in sight without having to worry about your ammo. Because, as you can imagine, you're going to run out of it really quickly. Oh. And did I mention how glorious the scenery looks? Glorious. It looks nice. Moving clouds, scenery, sparks, light. Such perfection and such a great eye for detail. I absolutely love it. Oh, and if you see an enemy staggering and glowing, you can go up to them and perform a glory kill. A lot of the times this will provide you with health and much needed ammo. What's good about it is you get to do it to someone that's completely destroying you. It's like beating someone on a game that keeps beating you, but this time at the end of it you get to rip their head off. It's like Mortal Kombat in a first person shooter. Wow, a Mortal Kombat first person shooter. Wouldn't that be a weird concept? And as if the game weren't gory enough, you get a chainsaw. An insta-kill chainsaw. You find gasoline for it, you unlock more gasoline for it later so you can kill more people. And you can even take out bigger enemies with it at the cost of more gasoline. And you're going to need all the help you can get because it gets so intense later on. Enemies will surround you and that's where the BFG comes in. I think you know what BFG stands for. I'm not going to say it. Use your imagination and that will just take everything on screen out. Along with power-ups scattered around, my favourite being Berserk. You can run over to any enemy and punch them to pieces or rip them in half. And you've got a time limit on them. Again, something that you can unlock that will last longer. And enemies cause new trouble using shields. No matter how big they are, this will take them out instantly. Along with quad damage, which does exactly what it says. It'll make your gun stronger and you will need it. What, you think having a rocket launcher makes a difference? You'll fire 10 rockets at some enemies only for them to look at you, spit them out and be even more angry. And that's where I started getting destroyed later on in this game. I couldn't get past certain bits and when I did, I think it was mainly down to luck. Because some of the boss battles on this, yes, there's quite a few boss battles, are really difficult. Sort of reminiscent of the old boss battles that you'd get in a game. And as you can imagine, what a last boss would be like, won't be easy. But so satisfying when you can shove a BFG into its mouth and bang. Oh, and BFG doesn't stand for Big Friendly Giant. And I had such a blast. It's probably the only game I've ever watched to end credits more than twice. Ever. Watch the credits and you'll see what I mean. I don't think there's anything that matches it. What did I think of the replay value? Well, I've played for it quite a few times now, and I wanted to play through the game after I'd collected everything, so I can walk around like a god. You know like on most games you used to have a cheat code that would give you god mode, something you could do in the original Doom, where you had unlimited health and ammo, and just destroy everything in your path, like I did. Yeah, it was nice. And also finding data logs, to find out what everything is about, to find out where you'd find these elite dead soldiers that you would take upgrades from. Because you can, indeed, upgrade your Praetor suit and weaponry. You can upgrade it where you'll find secrets, where it'll vibrate when a secret's nearby. And there's a lot of collectibles to find. A lot of them where you get to view 3D models, you'll find these little bobbleheads scattered around, and some of them are so difficult to find. So if you are looking to 100% this game, yeah, be prepared to go for a level a few times until you find what you're looking for. Oh. And this wouldn't be a Doom game without a load of secrets and easter eggs scattered around. It just wouldn't be.
On every map, there's a hidden original Doom level. And once you've found it, you get to play it from the main menu. And a lot of the time, it's very beneficial that you do find these rooms, because a lot of them will have armor and weaponry that you're going to need. I think everyone likes finding easter eggs on games. Look at this, a Doom and a Quake poster near a dartboard. The Doom one's covered in blood. <laughs> the irony. And if you are in one of the classic maps, get your health really low and blow yourself out of a barrel. It has to be a barrel and you'll see a Doom guy head land in front of you. And uh, yeah, one of the saddest scenes on any film is the ending of Terminator 2 with the thumb. If you jump into the lava, you'll see him do that exact pose. Very sad. And I thought this game was a real pleasure to play. It reminded me of the old first person shooters, but very modern, very clean, the graphics are great. And as you can see here, I unlocked everything. I played it that much. It was a game I got that I wasn't too sure if I would like, hence the time it took me to get it, but I ended up loving it. I platinumed it, so I got 100% on it, and it was a pleasure to do. It was something I really enjoyed. So much so that I ended up getting it on the Nintendo Switch. Why you ask? Well, why not? Walking around with a copy of Doom. The Doom I just played on a handheld. And I think it looks great. Considering how decent the game looks anyway, I think they did a good job. Obviously it looks better on the PS4, but being able to play this game while you're sitting in bed, come on, isn't that amazing? So yeah, that was Doom. For me, a unique gaming experience that I really enjoyed, and I recommend everyone should give it a go. Play it. It's cheap on Steam, and it's cheap on Xbox One and PS4, but it's quite expensive on the Switch, for obvious reasons. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you later. Bye.